everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. For this video, I did not want to just focus on the Zoom R20 multi-track recorder, but I wanted to highlight a free piece of software that you can use that will interface with the R20. And that free piece of software is Guitar Lab. Guitar Lab is made by Zoom and you could download it for free through their website. If you are not using Guitar Lab, you're kind of missing out on some of the value that's offered with the R20. When I first purchased the R20, I didn't really use Guitar Lab for the first three or four months. Um, I knew it was there, but I only dabbled with it for a second or two. I started using it a lot more and realized that I was missing out on a lot of effects that I could be loading into the R20. So if you have the R20, I highly encourage you to check out Guitar Lab and try it out. Use it a little bit and see if you can find some new effects in there that will make your time worthwhile for your recording purposes. How do you actually use the Guitar Lab software? Well, the first thing that you need to do is go to the Zoom website for your region. Once you're there, there's gonna be some kind of section that'll say support and documents. So you can go to that section, which will usually bring up a search box within the website. You can search for the R20 there, click that. You'll be sent to the R20's main support page where you can find the manuals and all kinds of other documents that support the R20 and give you more information about the R20. Usually up at the top there, you'll have access to the Guitar Lab software. Now, usually it's posted with the most current version available. I think right now as the as uh, filming for this video, Guitar Lab's on version 7.3. I think it came out in April of 2022. You'll have two versions for you though, a Windows and a Mac version. So you can click on whichever one's appropriate to you, which should initiate the download of a zip file. Once you have that zip file, you want to extract it and then you should find an installer file within inside that zip folder that you created for yourself. So click on the installer file, then install the software onto your computer. Before we get started with hooking up the R20 to a computer and Guitar Lab, I just wanted to show you what kind of preloaded effects are on the R20 when you buy it out of the box. So you will go through all these effects patches if you go to your effects um, settings and it has up to 40 effects patches that are already pre-loaded for you, and it ends at this send plate two. Below that are, are empty slots. 41 to 50 are empty patch slots. We can choose one of these, like slot 50, and hit this icon on the side here. This is all, again, just on the R20. We can load up our own effects. So you can hit any one of these, essentially, stop boxes. Uh, we can pick the first one, then you just pick type, it's on bypass right now, and then we can choose any of the preloaded effects that are already on the R20. I could grab the little icon on the side here and scroll down faster, and we get all the way down to the bottom and it says that we have 83 different effects that are available for us to use. So when we go into Guitar Lab, we'll see how we can modify that and add more effects and add custom effects patches in those um, empty slots that we had between 41 and 50. So once you have Guitar Lab installed on your computer, you can now hook it up to your R20. What you're gonna need is a USB cable to facilitate that connection. I have found a lot of more success when I'm using, for whatever reason, a USB-A to USB type C cable. So the R20 has a USB type C on its side over here, but if I'm using a type C to type C, for whatever reason, it works sometimes, but it doesn't work 100% of the time. I've had a lot more success when I'm using a USB type A side that goes into my laptop and then it has a USB C on the other side. This is from the OPZ, which is an A to C USB cable, and it's been effective for me. So I'm going to run that through here and plug it in to the side of the R20. You can see on the software, it says there's no device found. Please turn the Zoom product off and then on. So we've got the USB cable hooked up. We can turn on the power now. After you get through the splash screen on the R20, we can go into the settings of the R20 and you could see that the setting down here says Guitar Lab. We could turn or click that and USB data OK.
and it takes a second and now we have a device found on our laptop it's updating the effects and it's facilitating that initial communication so we now have you can see our listing of our different effects that we have already loaded onto the R20. The R20 will stay in this state. You can't use it, you can't record with it when it's communicating with Guitar Lab software on your PC or your Mac. So once you have Guitar Lab all hooked up, it's talking to the R20. You could do a couple different things with it. And I just want to give you a brief overview of some of the different uh, features that are available in Guitar Lab. So first things first, we're on the effects tab up here. When we are on effects tab, you can organize these things by the dynamics or by the category that you want. We can flip this up and go through all the different categories and organize it that way by the different effects, and you could rearrange it that way. Um, the power, how much CPU power does it use? You can organize it that way to see which effects use very little power versus which ones use a lot. Um, and then you could see the different comments and the use and the effects pool. So let's go back here to the category. We'll start off with dynamics and we'll scroll, th scroll through the effects that are available on the R20. So these are the effects that come loaded on the R20 as the factory defaults. And what you'll see is that as you scroll through them, you have these things, again, broken up into categories. So we have the dynamics. These are our compressors or noise gates um, for the most part, but you can look at any of these and then take a peek at what the comments are. You can also right click any of the effects, hit favorite to delete from the device, or go to properties. And when you go to properties, it will tell you what the different um, parameters are that you can modify on those effects. You could read what those parameters are to understand a little bit more about the effect. So these are individual effects. We can delete these from the device or we can load more onto the device. On the bottom right corner of Guitar Lab, it'll tell you how much memory that you have. So with the factory default uh, firmware version 3.0, you're probably in the high 60s. Over here on the side, we have the effects pool. We can open up these different categories now and just look and focus on any of the individual categories. This is redundant from what we're seeing over here when I open up dynamics. So it just shows us the exact same effects. The effects that are grayed out, those are the ones that are already available on the R20 device. The ones that are in yellow are the ones that we can load. So these are different effects that are just in Guitar Lab right now, but they're not on the R20. So we can go to Glam Compressor. Uh, it's a, it's a glamorous compression tone. Right click it if we want or hit load to device over here. So we can load it to the device um, and that'll load it to the RR20. Or we can scroll down and find Glam Compressor over here and click that. You'll notice that it has this um, arrow icon. So when we click that, that will then load it to our device. So as we go through and look at these different effects, we can choose which effects that we may want to load. If we are in the filter category, you'll notice that there's a variety of EQs that are available to you that are not available on the factory default settings. So you could load a bunch of extra EQs. Um, and there's some other interesting effects that I like to use, especially when you go to the distortions, the overdrives. There's a lot more effects here that you have available to you that are not available on the um, regular default um, categories. So like if you want the Boss B, uh, DS1 distortion, here's an emulator for the Boss DS1 distortion. You could load that onto the R20 um, and it's just by clicking that little um, arrow icon, circular arrow icon, it'll load it onto the R20. So now we'll have that Boss DS1 distortion pedal stomp box. It's a classic stomp box that you'd have available to you. Going through the overdrives, you have different amp models and different cabinet models. Just be aware that it, using any of the amp models uses a lot more of the CPU power. So you can get to a point where you try to create a custom patch that has these different modeling effects on it and it'll give you an error because you went over 100%. You can't use the maximum amount of the processor for any of the modeling effects. Um, so for we have cabinet down here. We got different ones that we could scroll through. Uh, modulation, there's a lot of different like chorus and, and flangers. There's um, even like the boss super chorus. Yeah, so if you wanted to load the boss 
CH1 super chorus, you can do that as well. Um, I'm kind of partial to the Boss Rollin effects. So well, let's load those and we'll get down here. We have different sound effects. None of these are stock sounds, but you can load some of these things if you want to. Uh, delays, there's different um, analog delays that you could choose from, digital delays, dual delays, and so forth. Reverbs, most of the reverbs are already loaded. You have a gate reverb, um, says it's good for percussion, that if you want like a snare sound that has a great reverb, you could try that. AG model, these would be acoustic guitar modeling effects that you can apply to your electric guitar, or if you have a plugged in um, acoustic guitar, and it'll try to make it sound like that. So that's what you have on the effects tab. Next up, we can move over to the patch setting. If we go over to patch, we could see our different patches that we have available. Now, again, 1 through 50 are all the ones that are preloaded as a factory default. So as we scroll through those, it'll give you a basic description of them. You can also right-click any of these. So here's some kind of acoustic amp modeling, I think, maybe, and hit properties, and it'll tell you um, what is already loaded onto that effect patch. So for the effect patch, this is where you're gonna have multiple stomp boxes loaded onto one effect pack that you, patch that you can choose. So it'll tell you that it has an exciter and then it has these different types of amp modeling effects. And as we scroll through, we can take a look at any of those. We could see that 41 through 50 are also empty. Now, if you wanna make changes to these, you can, but what you may want to do first is back them up. So you can back any of these up by just clicking and dragging them over into the patch pool, and you'll put them over here in the patch pool. You can also back up all of them by clicking this down at the bottom, and you'll back up all of your effects. So the last thing that I wanted to show you is the editor feature. When you're on the editor feature, you can actually edit these effect patches. Down at the bottom, it'll give you the patch number that you are looking at and trying to edit. So here we're on patch number one, which is the MS High Gain. It'll show you the individual stomp boxes now that you can manipulate. So you could turn any of these knobs um, with your mouse, or you could even, like a stomp box, turn it on or off. So it's like you're hitting the stomp box with your foot, and you could bypass that individual effect pedal within that patch. If we go down to the bottom of our patches, where we have our empty patches, okay, so now we've got our empty patches that we looked at before, um, we could select patch 50, you could see that it's empty. If we want to start to build our own custom effect patch, we can do that. We could do that by putting something here in any of these stop boxes. So for this, we can click the, the type and then choose which type that we would like to use. So if we use dynamics, maybe we want some kind of compressor in there. All right, we've selected that. Now for the second pedal, we could go down to our filter and maybe use some kind of EQ. All right, we've got that in place. And this will show you that it kind of branches across effectively two pedals. And then for the Last one, maybe we would add some kind of reverb, like a hall reverb, sure. So now we have our individual stomp boxes that we put in place, and we can turn these things on or off. You can see that this is the same, it's like a stereo linked stomp box essentially. Um, but within these stomp boxes now, we can manipulate them. So you could turn them up or down for any of the parameters that you're given an option for. Some of the parameters are binary, uh, binary, so this is like attack, so you either have slow or fast for the compressor. You don't really get to select an analog setting there, but for the tone, you can change that. You could change the volume of the effect and so on. For the uh, parametric EQ, you can see that you could change these settings for your frequencies and the gains for the different quarters. And then for reverb, you've got your um, pre-decay, uh, your decay, your balance, and something else for your tail here that you could turn your tail on or off. So you can see that you can create your own custom-made effect. And once you've created it, you can now name it.
And by just double tapping the name, you could type in something. You only get a limited number of letters. So test effect. And then you could also, if you wanted to, type into the comments section some notes that you have a compressor, um, an EQ, and a Hall reverb. So this way you could leave some notes for yourself that you have that in place. So we've got our um, brand new patch that's installed for us and we could hit save. Save the changes for the patch 50 test effect. Okay, and there you go. So now we have our new custom made effect that's available to us. We put it into Guitar Lab, but it was just transferred over to the R20. So those are the main things that you'll have at your fingertips with Guitar Lab. The last thing that's up here at the top is the news. You could click that. This is just little blurbs that Zoom puts out there. To be honest with you, there's really nothing of value here and it doesn't really get updated all that often. So in terms of news, I'm not sure if there's anything even from 2022 that was really thrown up there. So um, you could kind of ignore that or just take a peek at it if you want to. But those are the main three things that you'll be using Guitar Lab for to modify and look at your effects list and to load new individual effects, like new individual stomp boxes onto your R20, to look at your patches, see what patches that you have available, reorganize them, um, rename them, and then really you're gonna be spending most of your time in the editor, where you can now edit your patches, create your custom effects that you want to use for any of your instruments that you're gonna be recording with, with the R20. Once you're done using Guitar Lab with your computer, you can simply back out and it'll ask you to execute on here that you want to back out of Guitar Lab. You could do that. It's one button push and then you could remove the USB cable. So I've just loaded up um, a program here or a project here rather. And so we can go to our track settings and try to turn on our effects. We've got our send hall effect on 34. But if we scroll down now all the way to the bottom where we have Number 50, we have test effect. And so we can now select test effect for ourselves. And if we go to the edit feature, um, you can now see that we've got our compressor, our EQ and our hall reverb all put in place for us. So this is a great way that you can go through, create your custom made effects. If you are working on effects, you hear about somebody else that's using effects on any of the other really Zoom devices that take advantage of their effects uh, library. You could kind of bring a lot of those over and use them on the R20. It's not always a one-for-one -one match and a lot of their uh, multi-effect guitar pedals have more effects and have more options that are available to you than are available on like the R20 or on the R12, but it's still a great way that you can add in new effects, edit them, and get everything all set up for your liking for everything that you want to record with. So that's what I wanted to show you today and focus on Guitar Lab. I think that if you're not using Guitar Lab, you're kind of missing out on some of the value that is available with the R20 because you could add in a lot more effects. And hopefully Zoom continues to update Guitar Lab over time. It doesn't seem like they update it as many times as they update firmware like they do for the R20, but if they're still updating it once a year or so and adding the occasional new effect, it's kind of nice to have that option available to you and you're taking advantage of it if you do decide to purchase the R20. All right. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any kind of questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them in a timely fashion. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. All right, goodbye.